Hi everyone, I'm Jeff, a teacher over here at Brooklyn Clay. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about washes on Bisqueware. Um, as you can see below me, I have a bisque pot here. Uh, this is made out of the white stoneware with some scraping action to kind of re reveal this grog. So I'm going to use the wash to fill in these little tiny spaces and then as soon as it settles in, I'll be taking some water to take it off of the surface. It's going to accent this really nicely. To show you a little bit more in detail, I have these three test tiles of the sculpture body. As you can see, it's kind of scratched up here. These are all the coppers that we have. This is the oh, over the over and under the white glaze, a clear glaze, and then just on the body itself. So hopefully what's going to happen is going to fill in these crevices with these nice dark accents and I'll wipe the surface away and it'll reveal it kind of back to a white stoneware. This can look really nice for things that you want it to like age or make it look a little bit more like it's been kind of an older pot or something like that. So I'm, I'm trying to give this more color than just the white. So what I have as far as tools over to the, my right, I just have a pretty simple setup, just a little bit of water. I have the copper itself, it's already been shook up and then a large brush for this large pot. So before I will actually put the wash on, it's important to wipe this down just like we do all this square. Um, so I will take my sponge, clean this out, and just start to wipe away any of the dust that might be in here. I'm also activating the surface to prevent any too much copper soaking up. We don't really need to use too much of this since we're going to be wiping off a lot of this off of here. I've already done this mostly, so this should be pretty ready to go. I'm just going to see how it's going right now. Looks like it's soaking up pretty well. So with this large brush, you can get these, they come in three packs, you can get them on Amazon. They're really nice. Uh, I think they also sell them at Blick and stuff, but I use these a lot. Get in here in the copper. And I have this on a banding wheel, so this is on one of these large blue wheels. So it's easy to turn around. And I'm gonna go ahead and start in the center here. So without it tripping over, I'm gonna start in the center, start to let it saturate in and then slowly go up. If you see that it's soaking up too quickly, I will probably go ahead and stop, do some more wiping down with some water, and then continue on. We're trying to get this really just a, a thin application. We're really just filling in the, the crevices here. So as you can see, as I go along, those little crevices are starting to fill up. If it's too dry, it's gonna to start to look like this. It's, it means I'm just really hitting the surface. I'm not going too far in. I'm, it's really gonna be important for doing these washes that we're getting into these spaces. You can do this on a lot of different types of clay. Um, all clays will be textured. Porcelain, maybe not so much, uh, but you can see I kind of really scraped this away with a metal rib to kind of give it more of a washable surface. So, I kind of had this in my mind before I started, but this doesn't necessarily have to be the thing that you do in the beginning. You can always end here if you want. So. Don't worry about getting all those little tiny holes. Uh, we want to get the majority of them. You see the little surfaces here. Um, when we go with this, over this with the sponge again, uh, that sponge with the water will drag some of that through and, and really lay that back in. But I want this to be pretty potent as it's inside of those. I want it to be like the pure copper mixture I have in this bucket that's laying inside of the surfaces here. So really just one coat should be fine. Um, I can see it's, it's starting to not stick here on the bottom. There's a little bit too much water that's stuck there. So I'm just gonna kind of brush that there and let that sit last. Any small spaces that you see, little small holes, you go ahead and take it. So as far as this layer, I'm done. Uh, I will go ahead and then take my, my uh, sponge, my brush on the side. And what I want to start to do is slowly wash this away from the surface. So I'm trying to reveal back that white, but I don't want to press the sponge too hard. I want to leave those small indentations of copper in there. Sometimes the directions that you choose to scrape, so if this was sitting on a wheel going this way and you're scraping that leaves gouges this way, you can kind of leave this in a little bit differently. 
See, that's what I'm looking for, those like those lines. Without any real, with a clear definition of that white stoneware right on top. So it does take a little bit of knowledge, like learning how to use the sponge right. I'm wringing it out to a fully dry sponge. It's not, not uh, gonna be squeezing a bunch of water out. As I do this, it might have a few drops, that's okay. But the stiffer the sponge, or the drier the sponge, the better this might be for you. If your sponge is too spongy, uh, sometimes just a simple towel can do the trick. Uh, but really removing this is kind of a little bit of a, I wouldn't say an art, but it's just a little bit of a learning how much to press. Just like how when we're learning how much to press for throwing or moving things on the wheel, too much pressure might actually remove some of the surfaces that we are trying to actually get. It might remove the copper from being actually inside there. So. You can always use a larger sponge. Um, I'm just trying to work on smaller areas just to go through this. Um, if I use a larger sponge, there's a chance that I might be removing too much in a certain area. You can always go back to it too as it dries. So if you end up feeling like you're removing too much from the bottom, you can always like leave it more like this where it's a little bit hazy and then just come back to that later on. You could do this with all of the oxides that we have um, in washes. So we have cobalt, black iron oxide, copper, and chrome. But you can see that these will all act differently and look differently as they're on here. So chrome's really, really powerful. Um, and I don't really know how that's going to look if, as a wash. I don't think the cleans really my accent as much. but. With these, it's always just gonna be a test. Um, you wanna set up some sort of clay test to find out the results that you'll do with these washes. We can see that as a brushed, just leaving it on, it would be very metallic-y, like a burnt metallic on that. So I think that's a little too much. I'm not gonna want that much on here, so I'm starting to just slowly remove this out of here. So I've finished all of this surface here, except for a little bit. I wanted to save this to show you right here. So you can see that the surface of the top is kind of had been brushed off. You can see that it's a little bit whiter here with those inlays of that nice copper. So what I want to do to finish this, I'm just using this rag here, and I'm just kind of making some circular motions on top. Now this rag is, I'd call it probably like bone dry, damp. You don't want it to be wet because what we're trying to do is we're remove any of that possibility that water is going to be pressurizing inside of these cracks, activating that drying copper, and then scraping it out. So we're just trying to really just get the surface down here. So there's some areas where there's so many microfine cracks it's starting to look kind of green. You can see that it starts to go more green here, and then it kind of comes into a whiter, more compressed area, back into another green band, and then back into this like compressed white. I'm going to be pretty satisfied with that as a surface, uh, but now I have to do the other side. So it's easy to just kind of take this as the, the plate or the bowl or whatever you have and flip this. Now, as far as washes go, I'm going to probably not put any wash here on this foot rim because it is a compressed rim. Um, but anywhere below it, this isn't going to be like a blaze. So this is something that could actually go right up to that ramp. So I'm going to go ahead and be doing a wash all the way down this surface here and a wash all the way in this surface here, but not on this little rim right here. Okay. So you don't have any of the same worries or concerns that you do with the glaze of it fluxing out and melting itself to the shelf. Um, kind of very similarly to the other side, um, I would have washed this off with a sponge, which I've already done. And because it's been activated by the water uh, coming out of the copper um, with the brush here, that you can already kind of see there's a, maybe a little bit of color difference that we have. This is a little bit uh, of a more warm tan, and this is a whiter tan color. This is usually where it's drier on the thicker spots, and then it kind of fades out. So I can see that these gouges kind of come in to this way, so it's kind of like a scrape into a, a pocket. So I'm going to kind of brush it on like same way so it kind of will start to soak up into it. Remember you're pressurizing into those little cavities there. You want to make sure that, that copper is kind of soaking in because that's what we're going to be 
really trying to keep, not the stuff that's on the surface. So don't worry too much if you're not covering all the spots. You want to really just be worrying about the small divots. So you see little pockets where there's not some, you can kind of just poke some more in there, or whatever, something like that. This is a really wet surface, so you can see that it's not really hanging out much on there, but that's okay. We don't want is a buildup of too much copper on the surface. Then we're just kind of wasting it because we'll be taking this off later. Um, so what I'm really trying to do is kind of making sure that this surface doesn't dry out too fast. I can push that copper into those little pockets on there. So that should be good to go. Um, I'll let this set up and dry, and then I will go ahead and uh, wash it off. One thing I wanted to say that we want to be sure of before we start wiping is we want these areas where you can see that it's still wet to dry off. If we start to wipe this now, then the, we know that the little areas, the crevices that are in here where the copper's hanging out is also not dry. So putting a sponge on that, you can kind of just take it up with it. So we're gonna wait to get these drier surfaces and that way we're only wiping down this dry surface with a wet sponge and it's not activating the color of the top of this. So now I'm just doing this part, which is exactly the same as the other side. I'm just wiping this surface off on this dry areas and then getting a head start. You can see that it's kind of smearing around. That's fine. I'm gonna use that, uh, this towel at the end to take that off when that dries. I kind of flick the sponge around so I'll do a little bit with a dry area like it hasn't been touched by the copper get it up and then as soon as it's completely covered I sponge it out bring it out and can start again that way it's kind of lessening the amount that I'm kind of just bringing over to another area just a background for why we're doing these and what's happening right now and we're having the coronavirus epidemic and pandemic at this point so we're turning all of our classes to online so here, this is all finished. Uh, I could leave this just as it is. I could just fire this with bare clay, no glaze, and we can expect that these lines will fire just as we kind of see them on these test tiles that I have in front of me. So we could see that this bare clay one with the surface washed off should leave those darker lines with a nice kind of metallic-y halo around it. Or I could decide that I would want to put glaze over it, over this, maybe a clear or a white or any other color too. Um, but with those things, are you going to want to test before you decide on the color that you're choosing? Some of these glazes might actually make this copper turn in different ways that you don't want the result that it's going to do that. So make sure you make test tiles if this is something that you're really interested in using before you put it on some of the sludge. For me, I'm choosing to just go with what we have here. Um, I'm just removing the top surface of that to be able to see what that uh, is most likely going to look like. So there's not going to be any engaging of the different blades. So that's it. Make sure you check out the Instagram to see this when this is, uh, comes out of the kiln. Thanks.